In the heart of Iran's desert, where the sun scorches the earth and shadows stretch long, the Natanz nuclear facility thrummed with covert purpose. Beneath layers of concrete and steel, thousands of centrifuges spun at incredible speeds, enriching uranium in a carefully orchestrated dance of physics and engineering. The facility was a fortress, both physically and digitally, a citadel isolated from the internet by an air gap, deemed impervious to cyber threats. Yet, in 2009, an invisible adversary breached its walls, setting off a chain of events that would redefine the landscape of global security. This is the story of Stuxnet, the world's first known cyber weapon designed to cause physical destruction. It's a tale of technological wizardry, human fallibility, and the dawning realization that in our interconnected world, no fortress is unassailable. Hi, I'm Nathan from Station X. We're a community of cybersecurity experts and learners offering training, mentorship, and resources to help you build your cybersecurity skills and advance your career. This is the Cybersecurity Diaries, telling you the fascinating story of Stuxnet, the cyber weapon that launched a new era of cyber warfare. An unexpected intruder. Mahmoud adjusted his hard hat as he walked into the control room at Natanz. The hum of centrifuges was a comforting sound, a sign that everything was functioning as it should. As a senior engineer, Mahmoud took pride in his work, ensuring the facility operated smoothly. He carried a USB flash drive in his pocket, loaded with diagnostic software and updates received from a trusted supplier. Unbeknownst to Mahmoud and his colleagues, this small device carried an unwelcome passenger. How Stuxnet found its way onto the USB drive remains a matter of speculation. Some experts believe it was introduced through compromised supply chains, infecting software updates before they reached Natanz. Others suggest more clandestine methods, perhaps a covert operative deliberately planted infected devices where they might be found and used. Regardless of the method, when Mahmoud plugged the USB drive into the isolated network, he unknowingly invited the enemy inside. The silent saboteur. Stuxnet was a masterpiece of malicious code, the result of thousands of hours of development by highly skilled programmers. Unlike common malware, Stuxnet was designed with a singular purpose, to seek out and disrupt a specific industrial process. Inside the Natanz network, Stuxnet went to work. It spread quietly, avoiding detection by using legitimate digital certificates stolen from reputable companies, Realtek and J Micron. That made it appear as trustworthy software. It exploited four zero-day vulnerabilities in the Windows operating system, flaws unbeknown to Microsoft and therefore unaddressed by any security patches. Stuxnet's target was the Siemens Step 7 software used to program the facility's programmable logic controllers or PLCs. These PLCs were the brains behind the centrifuges, dictating their operational parameters. Stuxnet intercepted communication between the Step 7 software and the PLCs, inserting its own malicious code while returning false feedback to the operators. For months, the malware collected data, learning the normal operation and normal operating patterns of the centrifuges. Then it began its sabotage. Stuxnet intermittently altered the centrifuge's speeds, instructing them to spin up to as much as 1,410 hertz, far beyond their design limit of 1,064 hertz, and then suddenly slow down to 2 hertz. This caused excessive stress on the machines, leading to vibrations, damage, and ultimately failure. Yet to the engineers monitoring the systems, everything appeared normal. Stuxnet manipulated the readouts, displaying expected operational metrics while chaos unfolded within the machine, unraveling the enigma. By early 2010, Iranian engineers were grappling with the perplexing problem. Centrifuges were failing at unprecedented rates, but investigators revealed no clear cause. Mechanical issues were suspected, but the pattern was inconsistent with typical wear and tear. Halfway around the world, Sergei Ulasen, a security expert at the Belarus company VirusBlock ADA, received reports from a client in Iran about computers caught in a reboot loop. Intrigued, Ulasen's team analyzed the issue and discovered a worm exploiting a zero-day vulnerability, a rare and concerning find. As cybersecurity firms globally began to collaborate, 
the true nature of Stuxnet emerged. Analysts at Semantic and Kaspersky Labs dissected the code, revealing its unprecedented complexity. Multiple zero-day exploits. Stuxnet used four zero-day vulnerabilities, a feat unheard of in malware development due to the resources required to find and exploit such flaws. Stolen digital certificates. By using legitimate certificates, Stuxnet avoided raising red flags during security checks and specific targeting. The malware was programmed to activate only in systems with particular configurations. The Siemens Step 7 software connected to specific PLC models controlling frequency converter drives from two specific vendors operating at particular frequencies. Liam Murcher, a researcher at Symantec, commented, this is what nation states build if their only other option would be to go in and bomb a place. The global awakening. The discovery of Stuxnet sent shockwaves through the cybersecurity community and governments worldwide. It was the first known instance of malware causing physical damage to real world infrastructure. Speculation about the origin of Stuxnet pointed towards a joint effort by the United States and potentially Israel. The level of sophistication combined with the strategic targeting of Iran's nuclear program suggested involvement at the highest level. In 2012, reports by the New York Times based on anonymous sources supported these claims, stating that the operation, codenamed Olympic Games, began under President George W. Bush and expanded under President Barack Obama. The attack had succeeded in its mission. Estimates suggest that the Stuxnet destroyed up to 1,000 centrifuges, about one-fifth of Iran's capacity at the time, delaying their nuclear ambitions, human factors and security lapses. Stuxnet's infiltration highlighted critical vulnerabilities, not just in technology, but in human practices. The reliance on USB drives in air-gapped environments creates or created an Achilles heel. Policies regarding removable media were lax and employees were not adequately trained to recognize potential threats. Moreover, the operator's trust in their systems prevented early detection. There was a lack of redundancy in monitoring. The data provided by the compromised systems were not adequately verified. As Ralph Langner, a German industrial control system security expert noted, the attacker took advantage of the fact that engineering and operations staff simply trust the data provided by their systems. The ethical and legal quagmire. Stuxnet raised profound questions about the nature of warfare in the digital age. If a cyber attack caused physical destruction, is it an act of war? What are the legal frameworks governing such actions? International law struggled to keep pace with technological advancements. The Tallinn Manual on the International Law Applicable to Cyber Warfare, published in 2013, was an attempt to provide guidelines, but many grey areas still remain. Colonel Gary D. Brown, a legal advisor for the US Cyber Command, reflected on the dilemma. We are venturing into a new domain where the traditional rules may not neatly apply. The aftermath and ripple effect. In the wake of Stuxnet, Iran ramped up its cybersecurity efforts, creating the Iranian cyber army and allegedly engaging in retaliatory cyber attacks against Western interests. Globally, nations recognized the strategic importance of cyber capabilities. Cyber commands were established and defense budgets allocated significant funds to both offensive and defensive cyber operations. Stuxnet also inspired a new generation of malware Duku discovered in 2011. Duku shared code with Stuxnet and was designed for information gathering, possibly to facilitate further attacks. Flame, uncovered in 2012. Flame was a sophisticated espionage tool capable of data theft and surveillance. These developments marked the beginning of a cyber arms race with nation states investing heavily in cyber weaponry. Lessons learned, the Stuxnet saga underscored the critical need for robust cybersecurity measures, particularly in industrial control systems, ICS, and critical infrastructure. Let's talk about security controls that could be implemented. Network segmentation. Implementing strict segmentation between different network zones can prevent lateral movement of malware. Anomaly detection systems. Deploying advanced monitoring tools capable of detecting 
unusual patterns in ICS environments, regular updates and patch management, addressing vulnerabilities promptly to reduce the window of opportunity for attacks, and the important human-centric strategies, security awareness training, educating employees about cyber threats, safe handling of removable media, and recognizing social engineering attempts, strict policies on removable media, enforcing protocols for the use and scanning of USB drives and other devices. As Michael Assant, a leading ICS security expert stated, we must bridge the gap between IT security and operational technology. The stakes are too high for complacency. The new reality of cyber warfare, Stuxnet demonstrated that cyber attacks could have tangible destructive effects without traditional warfare's overt aggression. It blurred the lines between peacetime espionage and acts of war. The incident prompted international dialogue on establishing norms and treaties for cyber operations. However, consensus proved challenging due to the differing national interests and the covert nature of cyber capabilities. A world forever changed. Today, the legacy of Stuxnet continues to influence cybersecurity practices and policies. Organizations recognize that air gaps are not foolproof and that security must be multi-layered, incorporating both technological defenses and human vigilance. The incident serves as a case study in the potential consequences of cyber attacks on critical infrastructure, a warning of what could happen if adequate protections are not in place. As we advance into an increasingly connected future with the Internet of Things, IoTs, smart cities, autonomous systems, the lessons of Stuxnet are more relevant than ever. Cybersecurity is no longer just an IT concern. It's a fundamental component of national security, economic stability, and in fact, public safety. Vigilance in the digital age. The story of Stuxnet is a testament to human ingenuity, both in creating and in response. It highlights the perpetual duel between those who seek to exploit and those who strive to protect. For Mahmoud and his colleagues at Natanz, the invisible enemy they faced was a harbinger of challenges to come. For the rest of the world, Stuxnet was a wake-up call, a reminder that in the digital realm, borders are porous and the front lines are everywhere. And as we navigate this complex landscape, one thing is clear, cybersecurity is not a destination, but a journey, one that requires constant adaptation, collaboration, and commitment. The invisible battles waged in code and circuits are as crucial as any fought with steel and gunpowder. And the question still remains, are we prepared for the next Stuxnet? I'm Nathan, thanks for listening. If you've ever enjoyed any of our content, or if you've enjoyed this, please like and share, it helps more than you know. Thank you.